Commissioner Hill published the Capital Markets Union Green Paper. This Green Paper, it will change our way of doing banking, our way of behavior as, as European citizens, and is setting the lines for the new mandate of the European Commission and also the activities of all the European institutions. Um, during the financial crisis, everything was focused, all the new legislation was focused on stabilizing the system, making sure that we didn't go off the cliff. That mentality has changed now, and clear, very clearly the focus is now much more on creating growth, creating jobs, creating new industries in, in Europe. Now, one thing you learn when you study, when you study finance is that uh, there is no financial stability if there is no growth. So having restored f f stability alone serves little purpose. What you need to do is to have an environment where there is stability, but where there is growth. Growth means what? Growth means what Philippe was just saying a moment ago, which is that uh, um, stakeholders, operator, can take risk, are able to take risk. And, uh, you know, if you take risk, you take returns. What are the, uh, the, the areas where you have a European corner or a European advantage? Cover bond and securitization. Now, we have all learned that we should make regulation that allows to exploit the strength. So why should we ever not? So we did it, and we will continue to do it. I think we are fully aware, or at least I, I, I am, that, that today we, you're not in a very easy situation. Like you said, you're often squeezed between European and national legislation, different interpretation by regulators. So I think one of the steps forward that we need to take, and I think this is also, for example, part of the discussion about capital markets union, is to make sure that these regulations are much more aligned, much more brought into line with each other, and therefore create a much more stable environment, and not maybe the volatile environment that's today created by 20 different legislations. Cover bond played an excellent role, uh, in particular in crisis time, in the difficult moment. So that is a typical anti-cyclical uh, element which needs to be uh, defended and, uh, and sustained. There are all sorts of initiatives that the industry can do, these initiatives responding to the CMU, but also other initiatives like creation of labels with very clear criteria, with very clear um, entry, uh, entry requirements with very clear remaining requirements <laughs> into this, uh, into this group. Now, when it comes to Capital Markets Union, uh, we strongly support the objectives to help restore sustainable growth and uh, job creation in Europe. <laughs> Uh, but I would like to make a few general remarks. Uh, first, we believe that bank lending does not have to decline as a consequence of deleveraging or regulation. Banks have also uh, repaired their balance sheet and increased their capital and are now in a better position to lend to the real economy. We strongly favor uh, promoting in priority the financing channels with short intermediation chains linking investors and borrowers uh, more directly. And in this respect, covered bonds and Danish covered bonds in particular have an important role to play and deserve their softer prudential treatment compared to securitization. We need to look from different perspectives what are the objectives that we want to achieve. Uh, from the perspective of the investors, the perspective of the uh, financial institutions, and the perspective of those that are on the ground and uh, are the promoters of projects, so the entrepreneurs. Now, if I take that third perspective from the entrepreneurial point of view, capital union, it is something which is desperately needed. And as an investor, I think we truly, you know, wholeheartedly support uh, the capital market reform. Uh, specifically because we live in such difficult uh, market environment. The element that I want to introduce is the element of analysis of the risk. Not all projects, not all money bear the same risks. Therefore, we do need a different class, a different uh, a nature of financial institutions that are ready to work with a certain set of risks. I think having collateralized dual recourse notes, you know, like SME, for us as an investor, are a perfect investment. You know, we really like it. 
there is nothing wrong about it, you know, but it, it stands for its own merits, it has its own criteria, it has its own valuation scheme. And, and I think we should stop comparing it to cover bond. It's just a different thing. Probably considered a dogmatic in terms of fund brief and covered bonds as such, i.e. I do like the idea of having mortgages in there, real estate, public sector assets as such, even though that may be a contradiction already, but that's just the historical development. I think there may be room for adding a little bit in terms of the um, also regulatory acceptance of similar assets, i.e. mortgageable assets that can be used. Nobody knows what's going to happen next uh, in this environment. And, and it forces us, uh, investors, to look at things that we would have never thought to look at before. Uh, real economy financing, uh, direct lending, uh, markets versus banking financing. But at the same time, a funding instrument like cover bonds that's been around for two centuries in Europe uh, has not been watched very carefully in this regard. So I think... Uh, with all the focus on SMEs, put the two and two together, suggests that you need to look both at what can be done in terms of innovation in the cover bond space, but also uh, how can we address the SME finance problem. What we hear from uh, SMEs uh, financed via debt firms or direct lending, uh, they say to us, when firms come to us, uh, they are quicker, more creative, uh, more flexible than uh, normal banks. Uh, but what we're seeing in Europe is just the beginning of the transition between banking, bank financing and, and market financing. I'm not sure that the uh, US model is the right model, but it, uh, well, we are moving in this direction. The first element is the knowledge that the default rate of the structured products that are already on the market since years related to SMEs is very low. So the, the risk appreciation of those products applied to SMEs it's, it's minimal. So the risk weighting that has been mentioned before is an important element because that has an impact, therefore, in all the capacity of banks or financial institutions to uh, 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 give money out uh, for, for these kind of products. The second element is, you know, and this is just you know, a reality on the market, but we need to take the measures that implement that reality in the regulatory framework. <laughs> The second element is uh, transparency, data collection, uh, uh, and harmonization of data collection that has been mentioned before. We cannot accept any watering down of the quality of the cover bond product. There was a huge effort of the cover bond community to work together to make a label of the cover bond we have given clear standards and clear qualitative standards and quantitative standards. And um, um, this should be the core concept of cover bonds. But at the same time, there was a decision to be open to reflect on how actually the SME lending can be addressed in the cover bond community and on how some cover bond techniques like the dual recourse, for example, should be uh, taken into consideration. Well, it was decided to establish, as I was saying at the very beginning, two task forces. The first one was uh, tasked to improve the level of harmonization in the cover bond space, especially on transparency. And I would say you have, in a way, two legs. Uh, one is to uh, get to uh, one common template so that we have some uh, harmonization in the data disclosure. And we have as well a bit more details. And in a way, it's to respond to uh, investor demand, uh, which has been voiced by the uh, Covered Bond uh, Investor Council back in uh, 2012. And the other leg is to explore whether at some point we could be moving this data to uh, a common platform. I mean, very importantly, when we have uh, built up our suggestion, we had two things in mind. I mean, one was, what are the cost benefits? So I'll give you a, a simple example. Loan by loan is uh, often discussed. Uh, you can say it's less relevant to uh, the covered bond product. So that's one argument. But the other thing is that when you see where it has been implemented, so in the UK, you can see that you have a low take up. So for example, you will have three users per month of the loan by loan data. So you can have huge cost for limited uh, value uh, for the market. 
The other key uh, topic we have uh, kept in mind is that you do have national differences, so we cannot harmonize everything. But when we cannot harmonize, we can explain. So then you can explain the differences so that you look at different data, but you know what you're looking at. The, the second uh, task force, it was on long-term financing, and had to address key question, technical question, how we can answer to the questions on SME lending. Uh, what would investors like in terms of the product? So uh, as already mentioned here next to me, I mean, there are no uh, reluctance in terms of investing in SMEs, but on the other hand, they say, well, maybe you're not the best place in terms of analyzing the underlying, underlying pool, so that's more the role of banks. Um, <coughs> on the other hand, uh, in order to, to get products in the market, uh, you could say, okay, why would banks use, for example, SMEs as, a, as collateral inst instead of mortgages? Um, if, if they still keep the risk on the balance sheet. Well, one of the few reasons would be if, if, the, if it would be cheaper or if the OC would be lower. And I think in that sense, in terms of SMEs, for now, um, it's, it's more, int more attractive for banks to use mortgages because you have a lower OC and you get cheaper funding. So in order to change that, you could say, well, how can you change that? Maybe if, if SMEs uh, as, as, as collateral, if there would be core bonds backed by SMEs, for example, or double recourse instruments, we can give it a lot of names. Um, if that would be indeed LCR eligible, because then the investor would, be, would buy it for a lower price. So there are a lot of um, uh, things that come into play uh, that could make things either more interesting or that maybe are currently uh, factors that block uh, using SMEs as collateral for cover bonds. So then we're also looking into alternative, uh, alternative options um, that if you have a, a pool of assets, and you would take the full pool um, and f the full underlying risk on your balance sheet, um, you potentially have um, a better capital treatment um, and, and, and uh, while well you keep the same risk than if you would only buy, for example, uh, the AAA tranche, not even talking about the, the junior tranches. And I think that's something in regulation which uh, it's, it's, it's going to, it's too extreme. We have a white piece of paper in front of us in the sense that we are starting from scratch. And uh, uh, since November, we have a new commission in place, we have a new supervisory system, we have a new parliament, and I think that there is a new spirit in the industry, and everyone is willing to cooperate on a different side and to, pro to pro propose something. And it's exactly, I think, what Lord Hill or Commissioner Hill is asking to the market. Come with some proposals, let's try to fine tuning uh, what is necessary, and let's try to move forward. Soaking up the sun, swaying. 